Right now, people recovering from addiction will have to find somewhere else to go. Why a Sock County Recovery Center is closing its doors. And a former Badger brings a bunch of smiles while stopping at the American Family Children's Hospital after Saturday's commencement address. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks. As if J.J. Watt is not enough to put a smile on your face on this Monday, May 13th, Patty is bringing a gorgeous sunrise. We're starting off with clear skies. So nice to see the sunshine. I know yesterday we started with sun, but boy, did we lose it for the afternoon. Today, we should be able to keep it all day. <laughs> yeah, here's the view. This is from the WIC TV Skycam. Skies are clear right now. Sun is up, but it is a chilly start to the day. Those clear skies and light winds have allowed temps to drop pretty close to the freezing point. So we have a frost advisory in effect for Dane County and counties to the north and east. Still feels a little weird to talk about a frost advisory because I was still wearing a winter jacket Aww. at a lacrosse game yesterday. So I got to remind myself that it's that time of the year. Got to get some flowers planted. Temperatures will be climbing quickly, though. We're starting off in the 30s, a few 40s to the south and west. Take a look at Camp Douglas, though. Burr, 29 degrees right now. We'll climb quickly today with highs in the mid-60s this afternoon. Should see partly to mostly sunny skies through the afternoon with just a light north wind. Here's a look at your traffic maps this morning. So far, things have been pretty quiet this morning, and looks like that trend will continue through the next uh, few minutes at least. A few brake lights showing up on Stoughton Road as the usual crowd heads to work early this morning. I did look around the area. There aren't any accidents or incidents. No stalled cars. No, nothing right now. Just grab the sunglasses. Cold morning, but temperatures are almost going to double today, huh? Yeah, we're climbing 30 degrees from wow. the mid 30s and the mid 60s. No one's complaining over here. <laughs> All right, thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. 602 right now. Three teenagers are in police custody after allegedly making threats to point at high school over the weekend. News for now's Adam Doxter is there live with the latest. Adam, good morning. Uh, the school district of Poinette says things should mostly be back to business as usual today despite an additional police presence after three students were arrested for making a shooting threat on social media over the weekend. Now this has all played out over the last 48 hours or so and the district says they first became aware of these threats just this past Saturday. They said they work with local police and the Columbia County Sheriff's Office to investigate. That's when they identified the group of teenagers responsible and were able to determine the threat was not credible. But even still, the three teens who police in the district are not naming this morning were taken into police custody and could face charges for terror for making terroristic threats for making the post. And District Administrator Matt Chappell said in a Facebook post from the school's Facebook page yesterday that the district wants to make this a quote, teaching moments and that they want students to know that their words on social media matter and that there's no jokes when it comes to making threats like this. All right, Adam Duxer following the story for us in point at this morning. Adam, thank you. More local news this morning. Madison police are investigating reports of shots fired around 10 last night in the Kennedy Heights neighborhood on the city's north side near Limburgh Elementary School. Police say multiple people called in to report, report the gunshots, but there doesn't appear to be any injuries. This comes after another round of shots was fired yesterday afternoon near the basketball courts at Alto Leopold Park on the city's south side. Witnesses told officers that a group of men got into an argument that ended in gunfire. No one was injured in that case, but a nearby house did get hit by a bullet. Police are still looking for suspects in both cases. Breaking news into the Channel 3000 Alert Center. Officials in Sweden say they're reopening a rape investigation against WikiLeaks founder Julian Hassange. Assange is accused of sexual assault and rape by two women while he was visiting the country in 2010. He stayed at the Ecuadorian embassy for nearly, nearly years to avoid the extradition in that case before being forcibly removed by British police last month. Assange has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. The man accused of planning to build a bomb and attack the UW Madison campus is set to be sentenced later today. Brian Campbell pleaded no contest in January to second degree reckless endangerment and possession of improvised explosives. Police seized bomb making materials from his apartment last year. He was supposed to be sentenced in February, but prosecutors said they found new evidence of Campbell searching the internet for instructions on how to make a bomb and drew maps of tunnels on the university's campus. 
Under the terms of his plea deal, Campbell faces a maximum sentence of three years in prison and eight years extended supervision. Sauk County is soon to be without another addiction resource center. Just a little over three years after it opened, Tellurian in Baraboo will now close. The organization says a lack of funding and qualified people to staff the facility forced them to put tens of thousands of dollars into that location, and they can no longer sustain that. The organization is now trying to work with Sauk County to start a transportation service that would bring people from that area down to Madison. You know, we're working really hard to let people know that just because you live in a rural community doesn't mean you don't deserve the same quality and of care and length of stay that you would if you lived in Dane County or Milwaukee County. The facility itself won't close until June. Tellurian is hosting a charity golf tournament at the end of the month to raise money for their other locations. Information on that event is over on channel3000.com. Five minutes past the hour right now. Thousands of students are not waking up to their alarms this morning, and that's all right because they're not really students anymore. More than 7,000 UW-Madison undergrads, masters, and law students graduated this weekend at Camp Randall as more than 43,000 people cheered them on. One of the highlights of Saturday's ceremony was hearing former Wisconsin football star and current defensive end for the Houston Texans, J.J. Watt, deliver the commencement address. And dream big, work hard was my motto because I truly believed that you should have as big of dreams as you want in this world. Never let anybody tell you you can't accomplish those dreams. After delivering that commencement address, J.J. Watt continued spreading smiles here in Madison. He visited kids at the American Children's Hospital this weekend. Ten-year-old Jacob had a chance to meet Watt. His mother, Elizabeth Rant Linstead, posted this video on Facebook. She said Jacob from Winnebago County has been receiving treatment for the last seven years, surviving brain cancer and leukemia. Mom thanked Watt for the giggles and for signing a football for Jacob. Doesn't that video just put a smile on your face? Oh my gosh, it gives me goosebumps. I was able to see his, uh, see his speech at UW this weekend. Such an inspirational guy. And this is just one example of how much good he does. He raised $41 million for Houston after Hurricane Harvey, too. He just, he's so caring about everything, and he's so real. That's what I like. You know, you see so many stars at that level where they don't care about the world, but he does. Like, he obviously saw right there. I mean, that is just... I mean, that's the perfect situation. Very proud that he's a Badger alum. That's awesome to have that. All right, 607 right now. So you might not know this, but Wisconsin was the first state to ratify women's right to vote. Lee and I head downtown to the state capitol to learn more about that and some of the events coming up to honor the 100th anniversary of that historic moment. But first, it's looking like it might be a gorgeous Monday. After a couple of weeks of needing the umbrella handy, you won't need it today, finally. Hattie's in next with our first alert forecast when News 3 Now This Morning returns.
Good morning from the Hattie O patio. We're off to a pretty nice start this Monday morning, although a little chilly, but a fast warm up is expected. We're definitely going to be warmer than we were yesterday. Yesterday's highs were generally in the 50s across southern Wisconsin. A little cool for this time of the year with a lot of clouds in the afternoon. We topped only at 55 here in Madison, the same in Janesville and Platteville, about 56 in the Dells. Temperatures should be about 10 degrees warmer today, a little closer to normal. Climb into the 70s, though, for the uh, second part of the week. There are still some big question marks, though, in that end of the week forecast. So if you have plans for late this week into the upcoming weekend, pay close attention to the forecast throughout the week because it may need to change. Here's a look at our weather track starting this morning. No changes made to the forecast for today. We stick with sunny skies this morning right into the afternoon. Here's a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam. No issues seeing the capital early today. Skies are clear here in Madison and all around. Now those clear skies have led to pretty chilly conditions and the National Weather Service has issued a frost advisory until 8 o'clock for Dane County and the counties to the north and east. That's where we're seeing temperatures dropping into the mid and even lower 30s. Camp Douglas now is down to 28 degrees. It's 34 in the Dells and here in Madison, 36 in Janesville. 34 as well through the Wisconsin River Valley. Winds are light this morning. They will stay from the north today, so it's not going to be a warm wind. But with that sunshine, we should warm up pretty quickly. Take a look at your future track forecast model. Already closing in on 60 degrees by lunchtime today. Now with a wind off of Lake Michigan, there is a lake breeze that will develop today. And you notice how the Temperatures cool down as you head towards Lake Michigan. 54 for the high today in Milwaukee, 65 here in Madison, 61 in Platteville, and 65 in Prairie du Chien. Should be a pretty nice evening, though, with no rain in the forecast. Temperatures will drop back into the 40s overnight. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a look at that extended forecast. We do get back into the 70s as we head through the rest of the week. We'll be a little bit unsettled, though, with chances for rain starting on Thursday and then possibly lasting through the weekend. Let's get a check on your traffic with Josh Tim this morning. Good morning, Josh. Yeah, it's a quiet start so far on the Beltline. No major delays showing up yet, although heading eastbound, you definitely want to grab the shades. The sun is out and very bright right now. Other roads here in Dane County not looking too bad. Just a few brake lights on Verona Road and Stoughton Road approaching the Beltline ramps. Nothing to worry about around downtown on campus. Volume not an issue at this point. And other main routes heading into the city, they're cruising at the posted speeds with no crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. This year marks a very big milestone for women's rights. Yeah, this is actually the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. And you might not have known this, but Wisconsin was actually the first state to officially ratify the amendment. Here to talk about that this morning is Bethany Anderson. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. You are the co-chair of a gala that actually celebrates women every year here in Wisconsin, right? That's right. I'm a board member for Wisconsin Women in Government. Every spring we have our main fundraiser, which is a gala featuring a keynote speaker. This year we're partnering with the Wisconsin Historical Society to really celebrate that ratification milestone. Speaking of 100 years, we have to talk a little bit about this sash because I hear it has a pretty historic significance. Yes, so the suffragists 100 years ago, 150 years ago, when they started that movement would make sashes and tunics. We will actually have one of the Wisconsin tunics on display at the gala on May 15th. But this sash was actually handmade to celebrate the sashes that were made by hand 100 years ago by women just this week. So we're really excited to have this for our board members and gala committee members to wear. We'll also have a selfie station where attendees can wear it and take a picture with uh, Forward, the statue. Very neat. So we've got this beautiful exhibit behind us. Let's talk a little bit about the history because this is pretty exciting here in Wisconsin especially. Right. It's very exciting, especially if you are into the Illinois-Wisconsin rivalry. Wisconsin being the first state to ratify was actually just by a matter of hours. We took a vote. We sent a uh, former Senator James from Richland Center out to hand deliver the ratification certificate to the Secretary of State's office, um, Secretary of the United States, excuse me. And he got there, got it stamped, came out. The gentleman from Illinois was there saying, here I am to officially ratify or uh, stamp our ratification. And everyone laughed because he was actually second. How neat. Talk a little bit about this being here. And it sounds like this is going to be here for a while for people to check it out. Yes, yeah, so this uh, is here from the Historical Society. It will be here until November when it's replaced by the Christmas tree. But at that point, it will go across the street to the Historical Museum where they will have other displays out celebrating this all year long. Obviously, this is quite the thing to be able to have here and a lot of history just around this thing in itself. We're excited for the 
the display here. We're excited for May 15th where we'll get to do a little bit of kickoff. Um, and then we're excited for June 10th when we'll have a bigger celebration with um, all kinds of events planned from the Historical Society and the committee here at the Capitol. All Very right, cool. Bethany. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you yeah, being here with you. us this morning. Thank if you're you. looking for any information on the upcoming gala or this exhibit, head on over to channel3000.com for those details. We'll be right back. Good morning from the News 3 Now First Alert Weather Center. Skies are clear. Sun is up this morning. It's a nice start to the day. We'll check in on the polar bears of the Henry Vilas Zoo Sky Camp. They're still up, still waiting for whatever comes from those doors. Probably <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so uh, just, uh, I guess I have to be a little patient there. But nice to see the polar bears out and active. It is kind of a chilly start to the morning. They're probably pretty comfortable. Temperature down to 34 here in Madison, 34 in the Dells, 36 in Janesville. Here's a look at your wind speeds. Winds are pretty light right now from the northwest. They'll stay northerly through the day, but plenty of sunshine will allow temperatures to warm nicely today. So as you head the kids uh, to the bus stop this morning, probably want a light jacket, but they won't need it later today with high temperatures in the middle 60s. Now here's a look at that extended forecast. Does look a little unsettled again as we head through the second part of the week into the upcoming weekend, but warmer temperatures, which is always nice to see. I know, Chris, it's been quite a start to spring. It hasn't really felt like spring many times. 
I know, yeah, I'm still wearing like the winter jacket. Lack of spring. Seriously, yesterday, uh, I know a family that had the boat out on the lake, but it was cold. <laughs> it was cold and everyone was bundled up. Yeah. It's about time we get some warmer temperatures. And I'm looking at the pattern towards the end of May, and I do think we may see a little bit of a warm up. Let's go ahead and start with the jet stream and how things have been working for us here in Wisconsin and how I do think things may change as we go through the end of the month. Here's how things are shaping up uh, as we go really through the end end of the week. We're going to have this big dip in a jet stream called a trough that's going to allow for some cooler air over the western half of the country. On the eastern side, this big rise of the jet stream, this is known as a ridge, allows for some of those warmer temperatures. Notice Wisconsin is in that sector of warmth. Between the two, that is our storm track. We're going to have several systems that come in off the Pacific throughout the west coast. They'll ride through the desert southwest and then work their way towards the north and east. This is likely still going to be an active pattern for us, unfortunately. But that's overall the setup I do think we'll see throughout the end of May and into June. That's going to be warmer temperatures throughout the south and the eastern half of the country, cooler temperatures back towards the north and west. That's really going to be amplified, folks, as we go through the next six to 10 days. Check out the warmer than normal probabilities for the eastern half of the country. A big bullseye in the southeast, but that does include us here in south central Wisconsin. We go through the next couple of weeks and it gets a little bit flattened, but we still see overall the same theme with those warmer temperatures. We'll have a better chance of average temperatures at that point, which even still those will be into the 70s. The problem is with that storm track, you're going to see drier than normal weather on the east half or east third of the country. Meanwhile, the western two thirds of the country will likely remain more so on the wet side. That trend will likely carry us into the next two weeks as well. And we're going to have to watch the overall storm track that is associated with that just because our threats for severe weather go up as we round out May and enter into June. Look at the spike that comes. Now, these are just Wisconsin tornado reports, but you've also got damaging winds. You have hail, a lot of lightning, flooding, things like that. So we are going to watch the overall pattern. I do think it gets a lot milder for us, but probably stays active. You know, I know love, Josh absolutely loves, uh, I think the scientific term is thunder boomers, right? <laughs> you got it. He's a big fan, so I'm not, I'm not afraid to see a couple of those. You know, thunder boomers, that's something we say down in Kentucky as well. <laughs> uh, down in Texas, that's, that is the scientific term. Yes, I'm sorry. thunder boomers. This term did not and, make it to Highland. <laughs> it did not. <laughs> and I, I have missed thunder, honestly. So it's relaxing, especially in the afternoon, just sitting out on the patio and watching a storm. Yeah. I really sound like a Southern boy right now. You do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm looking forward to more of that. We'll see, but you know, I do think we're gonna have an active pattern. I guess the good thing is we haven't had a lot of severe weather yet. Yeah. No. So, but I'm kind of nervous because we haven't had much once it starts coming. You know, we're not used to this. I can say across the plains, places like Nebraska, especially across the deep south, they've had a lot of mm -hmm. severe weather yes. lately. They've dealt with flooding in Houston just this past week. Um, that does tend to move further north throughout this time of the year. Mm. I am seeing signs of perhaps a more active severe weather period across parts of the plains in the Midwest. How far that makes it towards Wisconsin, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll watch it closely. Oh, you're all right. Thank Better you so to be much, ready. Chris. All right, my pleasure. We appreciate it. All right, it is 623 right now. School officials in Poinette say they had a luring experience this weekend after three students were arrested for making a school shooting threat. We'll have the latest in a live report coming up. And Charlotte Deleste is taking us to Prairie du Sac, where Wallersheim Winery is distilling the American spirit, and all for a good cause. How you can help do something good. That's coming up on News 3 Now this morning. Summer's
Now, three students are in police custody and could face charges after making threats to their school online. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for staying with us on this Monday, May 13th. Hope you had a good weekend. Oh, the weather wasn't the best, but it wasn't awful either. It wasn't terrible. Cloudy and cool, but it's going to make today all the better because yes. Hattie has some sunshine, some 60s in store, right, Hattie? Yeah, we already have the sunshine. It's kind of a shame that we couldn't have had this weather yesterday, <laughs> but it's Monday. You're going back to work and school with a pretty nice forecast coming up. Let's take a live look outside from the Edgewater Sky Cam out over Lake Mendota. You can see some sailboats already anchored just off the uh, Union uh, Beach there, or the Union uh, also, looks like there are some boats in the water. So everyone getting up a little early this morning. Getting at them. At clear skies are in the area. There's clear skies, though, leading to kind of a chilly start to the day. A frost advisory has been posted for parts of the area. This does include Dane County and counties to the north and east. That goes until 8 o'clock this morning. It is a little chilly outside. 34 here in Madison, as well as the Dells. Camp Douglas is back up to 30. They were down to 28, so it is a, a bit of a chilly start in some locations. But as you head out the door, don't forget the sunglasses. Temperatures are going to warm quickly. So if you have a light jacket this morning, you definitely won't need it later on today. Highs will be in the mid 60s with very pleasant conditions today. 65 is pretty close to our normal high for this time of the year as well. Now let's get a look at those first alert traffic maps this morning. We're not seeing any major delays on the Beltline or in the downtown areas. Looks like it is a little slow on Stoughton Road as you approach the Beltline from the south, but nothing that's going to slow you down too much just yet. No major delays or accidents to report right now, but I would say as we head towards the 7 o'clock hour, things are going to get a little busier around Madison. Hads, I'm looking forward to having a little bit of sunshine on our drive in and out of work today, huh? Yeah, we didn't need the sunglasses very much this weekend, <laughs> so it'll be nice to use them again today. All right, thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. All right, in the news right now at 6.30, three students from Point at High School are in police custody after allegedly threatening a school shooting on social media. News for Now's Adam Duxter is at the school live with the details. Adam, good morning. Well, there will be increased police presence at Poinette High School today, but the school district says it should be business as usual after three students were arrested for making a shooting threat on social media over the weekend. Now, the district said in a post yesterday they first became aware of the threat made to social media on Saturday. And after that, they say they work with local police and the Columbia County Sheriff's Office to investigate. And though they found the threat was not credible, they did identify the group of teenagers responsible and arrested them. And they say that those three teenagers now face charges of making a terroristic threat. They are not releasing their names right now because they are juveniles. But the school district district administrator said in a Facebook post yesterday that this is a learning lesson for students that no matter what you're saying on social media, even if it's a joke, could still land you in some big trouble. All right, Adam Ducks reporting live from Point Ed this morning. Adam, thank you. Into the Channel 3000 Alert Center overnight. Deputies in Iowa County are investigating a fatal crash on Highway 80 just outside of Highland. Dispatchers got the call just before 10 last night about a car that had rolled over. The driver was identified as 26-year-old Heather Fishnick from Bel Belmont. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused that crash. We're continuing to follow the ongoing trade war between the U.S. and China that could affect farmers here in Wisconsin. China is promising to take necessary countermeasures after President Trump imposed billions of dollars worth of tariffs on goods coming into the U.S. last week. Over the weekend, President Trump tweeted warnings Beijing to act now on a trade deal, adding it will be, quote, far worse for them if he wins a second term. The White House's top economic advisor acknowledges that U.S. consumers and businesses will be the ones paying for the tariffs imposed on China last week. Wisconsin is expected to be a key battleground state in the 2020 presidential election. And this week, Republicans will make plans to rally voters all in support of President Trump. Friday is the Republican state convention. GOP leaders will focus on how to engage with grassroots voters if they hope to rebound from 2018 after Democrats defeated Governor Walker and every other statewide Republican candidate. The theme of their meeting is a new day, a new party. We're learning more this morning about allegations of drinks being spiked at the Pfizer Forum Plaza. 
A handful of people say they either got sick or blacked out after drinking Moscow Meals, a popular cocktail sold on the plaza. Those claims were made in a Facebook post Friday. At this time, the Bucks say an initial investigation found no added substances to any drink served there. The team says it sent samples to Milwaukee police for lab screening. They've also removed all pre-batched cocktails from their menus and scheduled additional employee training. Changes may be on the way for anyone driving between Stoughton and McFarland headed into Madison. The state's Department of Transportation is resuming the U.S. 51 corridor study, which was stopped back in 2013 because of fiscal constraints. The DOT and Federal Highway Administration are looking at a nearly 19-mile stretch, stretch of Highway 51 from the Beltline through Stoughton, then east to I-3990. Todd Darst, who owns Toddle Inn Nursery off Highway 51 in McFarland, says he'd like to see some safety improvements like roundabouts. Well, you know, at certain intersections down there, you want to be pretty careful. I see the fire trucks and ambulances going that way lots of times, you know. I'm sure somebody pulled out in front of somebody. The DOT says if the study is approved as a major highway project, construction would begin in the early to mid-2020s. All right, 6.33 your time now. It's not like I needed another excuse to head to Wollersheim Winery, but Charlotte Deleste has me thinking about getting up there this weekend. Their latest creation is truly capturing the American spirit with some patriotic colors, and it's all for a good cause. How they're doing something good for those who have served the best way they know how when News Now This Morning continues.
Welcome back at 637. We've been asking you to share your morning with us and Susan posted this on Facebook. Check out that sunrise shot. Susan, that is a gorgeous photo, especially considering we had a weekend without a lot of sun, right? I know. We've had a lot of like of these good pictures coming in, especially on Friday morning yes. when we had the sun finally after like what that four day stretch <laughs> without it. You have to take advantage of when we do have sunrises because they have been few and far between. And folks. send them to um to us rather. Please we love do. those shots. It's Thank the best you so part of the much. morning. Thank you so much, Susan. Set and you just heard Josh. Send him on in. Use our Facebook page or Twitter. Make sure you use that hashtag MyNews3Mornings. We can find and share our favorites right here on the program. It is starting to be that time of the year. Oh yeah, we are talking about happy hour on the patio with those sunrises. It can be a busy time of year over at Wollersheim Winery in Prairie du Sac. Perhaps a little more than usual right now because of a special spirit being distilled. This whiskey is one of a kind, made with three different colored corn with a recipe like no other. Corn, we decided to uh, blend those three colors matching the percentage of the American flag. The, f the American flag for us uh, is something grand. Uh, we have a lot of respect for the flag. After three years of barrel aging, the limited edition whiskey is now ready to be sold. But Wollersheim won't keep a single penny of those sales. In a special Do Something Good story tonight, our colleague Charlotte Deleste will tell us what Philippe Cocard plans to do with the money and how you can get your, your hands on a bottle or two this weekend. Tune in tonight on News 3, now at 10. So Josh, do you have plans this weekend? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be here, but I, we, need <laughs> to, we need to get this on the list. I've been telling myself, so we just need to put it on the schedule. You've never I been. Check it. I've never been there, and I've heard good things. Wollersheim Winery is a true local gem, certainly. Philippe is from France, and he married a local a local winer, winemaker, so it's it's definitely a place that you have to put on the list. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm like really looking forward to seeing Charlotte's story tonight, because I feel like that meaning, too. Like I always love a good meaning behind something, right. especially like... Something like that. Just so. another reason to visit. Just another reason to drink, too. How about that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 6.39 your time now. Bit of a chilly start to our day. We're starting in the 30s. Burr. Freezing. But we're going to almost double that number. Hattie's going to tell us what we can expect for the rest of our work week. That's coming up. But first, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV. Thanks for waking up with us on News 3 Now This Morning. We're back after this.
Good morning, everyone. We welcome you back on a Monday morning, 642 right now. Live look in Platteville. Can we just stay on that all morning? What if I told you, Josh, all of the best sunrises come from southwest Wisconsin? It's like I can feel the heat right now. That is beautiful. Just bring it on in. Patty is talking about a pretty nice warm up for the day. We'll talk to her in just a couple of minutes here. All right, if you blinked, you might have missed it, but plenty of people online are talking about Aaron Rodgers' cameo appearance in last night's episode of Game of Thrones. I actually watched and could not find him, so I had to go to Instagram. <laughs> Rodgers posted this picture to his account last night, proof that he was on the show's second to last episode. He was only in a couple of really quick shots, including getting engulfed in flames. Rodgers referenced that with fire emojis in his Instagram post. The final episode of Game of Thrones is next Sunday. Now, I know you're not a Game of Thrones fan. I am. I'm staying up late every Sunday so I can catch these. Last night's was a doozy, Josh. So I've been told that I need to start this. I don't know if I'm going to, but what's, what was the point of Aaron being in that? Was it just for fun? You or? know, so a theme of Game of Thrones is the Night King, which they defeated in the previous episode, and they like to call Aaron Rodgers the King of the North. Okay. Because he is the NFC North. It's a big deal. So, I mean, that's the, that's the connection there. Spoilers. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Am I giving away some spoilers here? <laughs> I don't know if we are or not because I don't watch it. But. <laughs> okay, we're done. We'll, we'll wrap <laughs> we'll that up. Let's move on. <laughs> 6.44 your time now. We now know who the Milwaukee Bucks will be playing in the Eastern Conference Finals after a crazy finish last night. The Raptors won Game 7 over the Philadelphia 76ers in Toronto, 92-90. Toronto's Kawhi Leonard clinched the series with a game-winning shot at the buzzer. The shot actually bounced on the rim a couple of times before falling in. Woohoo! Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals will be Wednesday night in Milwaukee. Tip-off is at 7.30 on TNT. All right, just about 6.45 on a Monday morning, and Hattie's talking all things sunshine to start off the week. <laughs> hey, Hads? Yeah, if it has to be a Monday, at least we're starting off with sunny skies. Take a look behind me, the Edgewater Sky Camera. Skies are clear, so a nice start to the day, though. Clear skies have allowed for pretty chilly conditions, and the National Weather Service has issued a frost advisory. It goes until 8 o'clock for parts of the area. Now, this does include Dane County and areas to the north and east. Temperatures are getting pretty close to the freezing point. But again, clear skies with that sun already getting a little higher in the sky. Temperatures should warm pretty quickly. We're not talking about any rain today. There were a few showers that skirted southeastern Wisconsin last night. All that rain off to the east now looking pretty dry out to the west as well. So a nice forecast, a chance to dry out for a little bit today. Now all that rain uh, from last week that's been impacting the southeastern part of the country that is beginning to move out into the ocean, but there still is some moisture left in New England. It's going to be a pretty wet and chilly day there. As far as severe weather chances, confined to just far southern parts of Texas, maybe a little bit of severe weather activity of southern Georgia, parts of Florida today, but generally pretty quiet coast to coast. Uh, not a lot of severe weather expected. That's good if today is a travel day for you. We're not looking at any flight delays at the major airports across the country right now. Again, in New York, that rain today may slow things down a little bit later on. Here's a look at your travel weather for Forecast. If you are headed east, take a look at some of these temperatures. 49 in Cleveland with showers, 50 in New York, only 58 in Washington, D.C. We're in the mid-60s here in Madison. Lots of 70s and even 80s as you head out west. So some pretty warm air building out to our west. We'll warm things up a little bit today, but we are starting off on a chilly note. Some of the coldest temperatures in the country right here, 34 in Madison. It's 45 in Minneapolis, 38 in Des Moines. Chicago is at 44 right now. Temperatures across southern Wisconsin are generally in the 30s to around 40 degrees. There are always some exceptions. Camp Douglas is right around 30, so below the freezing point there, but 41 in Mineral Point. Winds are light this morning, and they'll stay light through the day, generally from the north. Temperatures should warm pretty quickly by lunchtime today. Already in the upper 50s here in Madison, some 60s to the west. This afternoon, temperatures will top in the mid-60s here. Notice that lake breeze, though, keeping things a little cool on the lakeshore. 54 for a high in Milwaukee and 58 in Kenosha today. Quiet this evening, though, if you have plans for this evening or tonight. Looks like the weather shouldn't impact them at all. Here's a look at your extended forecast. We have temperatures climbing into the 70s, but unsettled weather expected. There are quite a few question marks for that forecast by the end of the week, so stay tuned. 
We may need to change things up as we go oh. through the week. But look at this picture. <laughs> Sansa <laughs> in Madison. Love it. This is another Game of Thrones reference. Sansa is a oh, Sansa, Game I'm of sorry. Thrones. Come on, you guys. You need to get into <laughs> what this. What was the one on Friday? Daenerys? Daenerys. Yes. Yeah. Saying, so. Well, that was pretty good. That is way too late for me. Watch party. <laughs> Watch party after the show today. Mm, I'm okay. Oh, Sansa I'm will be join outside. me. Sansa and I will be watching. Right. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. Stay with us. The morning sprint is up next on News Through Now this morning. <laughs>time for the morning sprint. A chilly start to your Monday with a frost warning actually in effect, but Hattie has a warmer forecast coming up. But we start in Poinette, where Adam Duxter has more on a school threat over the weekend. Adam? Police say they'll have additional presence at Poinette High School today after three teenagers were arrested over the weekend for making alleged school shooting threats. Now, the school district says they work with Columbia County Sheriff's Office and local police to investigate, and that's when they identified the group of teenagers responsible and were able to determine the threat was not credible. But even still, the three teens who police and the district are not naming this morning were taken into police custody yesterday and could face charges of terroristic threats for making the posts. Thank you, Adam. Back in Madison, police are investigating reports of shots fired around 10 last night in the Kennedy Heights neighborhood on the city's north side near Lindbergh Elementary School. Police say multiple people called in to report those gunshots, but there doesn't appear to be any injuries. This comes after another round of shots was fired yesterday afternoon near the basketball courts at Aldo Leopold Park on the city's south side. Witnesses told officers that a group of men got into an argument that ended in gunfire. No one was injured in that case either, but a nearby house did get hit by a bullet. Police are still looking for suspects in both of those cases. The man accused of planning to build a bomb and attack the UW-Madison campus is set to be sentenced later today. 
Brian Campbell pleaded no contest in January to second-degree reckless endangerment and possession of improvised explosives. Police seized bomb-making materials from his apartment last year. He was supposed to be sentenced in February, but prosecutors said they found new evidence of Campbell searching the internet for instructions on how to make a bomb and drew maps of tunnels on the university's campus. Under the terms of his plea deal, Campbell faces a maximum sentence of three years in prison and eight years extended supervision. And as you head out the door early this Monday morning, temperatures are in the 30s in many spots, close to the freezing point here in Madison with 34, 38 in Platteville and 39 in Janesville. Now expect a quick warm up today with sunshine in the forecast. Temperatures will climb through the 50s to highs in the mid 60s this afternoon. Thank you so much, Hattie. A powerful and slow moving storm system is hitting the northeast after drenching the south over the weekend. From Texas up to Virginia, trees crashed on houses and roofs were ripped completely off buildings. In Hillsdale, Mississippi, flooding is believed to have caused a freight train to derail. Over in New Orleans, roads looked like rivers, leaving residents there trapped and shutting down public transportation. The south should clear up today, but the entire eastern seaboard is expected to get rain at least through this evening. Officials in Sweden say they're reopening a rape investigation against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Assange is accused of sexual assault and rape by two women while he was visiting the country in 2010. He stayed at the Ecuadorian embassy for years to avoid extradition in the case before being forcibly removed by British police last month. Assange has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. President Trump is tweeting this morning about the trade war with China after billions of dollars in tariffs on Chinese goods went into effect on Friday. The U.S. is waiting to see what kind of retaliation China could have in store for those tariffs. President Trump tweeted warnings Beijing to act now on a trade deal, adding it will be far worse for them if he wins a second term. The White House's top economic advisor did acknowledge that U.S. consumers and businesses will be the ones paying for those tariffs, not necessarily China. Wisconsin helped President Trump win the election in 2016, and Republicans will start making plans to rally voters again later this week. The Republican state convention begins Friday. GOP leaders will focus on how to engage with grassroots voters if they hope to rebound from 2018 after Democrats defeated Governor Walker and every other statewide Republican candidate. The theme of their meeting is a new day, a new party. New research from England shows family doctors need more training in the opioid crisis. That study found doctors are not equipped to deal with the psychological challenges that patients face when stopping painkillers. Numbers from the CDC show doctors have started prescribing fewer opioids, but some patients say that's left them in severe pain. Sac County is soon to be without another addiction resource center. Just a little over three years after it opened, Tellurian and Baraboo will close. The organization said a lack of funding and qualified people to staff the facility forced them to put tens of thousands of dollars into the location and they no longer can sustain it. Now the organization is trying to work with Sauk County to try and start a transportation service that would bring people from that area down to Madison. Today marks the beginning of law enforcement week across the U.S. You might notice flags at half staff across the state throughout this week. That will happen during public ceremonies to honor those who have lost their lives while on duty. On Wednesday, flags will be at half staff from sunup to sundown to mark Peace Officers Memorial Day. We'll have more on Law Enforcement Week coming up tomorrow on News 3 Now This Morning. Changes may be on the way for commuters in Stoughton and McFarland heading to and from Madison. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is resuming the U.S. 51 corridor study, which was put on hold in 2013 because of funding constraints. According to a statement, the DOT and Federal Highway Administration is looking at an 18.6 mile stretch of Highway 51 from the Beltline through Stoughton, then east to the I-3990, planning to address safety and pavement conditions. The DOT says if the study is approved as a major highway project, construction would begin in the mid to er, early to mid 2020s. 6.56 your time now. Let's turn it over to Josh Tim with a look at your first alert traffic. Hey, Josh. Hey, good morning. The usual crowd beginning to show up on the westbound belt line between Stoughton Road and West Broadway. It's going to add an extra minute to your drive time. Inbound side of John Nolan, you're tapping the brakes near the Rim Rock and Nolan Avenue intersections, but really nothing that'll delay you quite yet. And other main routes heading into the city, including the interstate, they're cruising at the posted speeds with no crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thanks so much, Josh.
And we have a great start to this Monday morning. Beautiful shot from the Edgewater Skycam this morning. So nice to see the sunshine. <laughs> and unlike yesterday, it looks like we'll keep it through the day today. Take a look at the temperatures. We are in the 30s this morning, but expect a pretty quick warm up through the day with highs reaching the mid 60s later on this afternoon. Normal highs right around 68 for this time of the year, so we're pretty close to that. We do warm through the rest of the week, but many chances for rain are back in the <laughs> forecast as well, unfortunately, especially starting on Thursday. All right, Hattie, thank you, and thank you for joining us, everyone. Make it a magnificent Monday. We'll see you back <laughs> here tomorrow morning.